Ever feel frustrated because you're spending way too much time on repetitive tasks in Excel? What if I told you there's a powerful feature you can use to speed up your workflow and save hours of time? After teaching it for the past seven years and showing over 500 students how to make it work, I can confidently say it's a game changer. So in this video, I'll introduce you to the magic of Excel VBA. You'll learn how to export 30 Excel sheets fast and we'll do it without any errors. Imagine getting the keys to a car. You hop in behind the wheel and it gets you to where you want to go. What you don't realize is that this is no ordinary car. It's a Tesla that can actually drive itself to your destination while you sit back and relax. Even better, it has ludicrous mode, a special setting that gives you 60% more engine power and gets you from zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Most people use Excel like it's an old car. They don't realize they're sitting on such a powerhouse. So they do the same old things month after month. But with VBA, which stands for Visual Basic for Applications, you unlock two benefits. First, you get full self-driving, which means you can automate your workflows and take your hands off the wheel. Second, you get ludicrous mode because VBA can work a hundred times faster than you can. And the best part, it's already built into Excel and it's free to use. You just need to unlock the secret menu. So how do we do this? We'll head up to the ribbon and right click, then click on customize the ribbon. Now head to the right and you'll see down here, there is a line that says developer. You wanna check that and then click okay. Now we click on the developer tab that's just come up and this is the secret menu. To access the Visual Basic Editor, click on this button here or you could press Alt and F11. Now that we've got access to VBA, let's see what it can do. Here's a workbook with 30 sheets. You might need to share specific sheets with different team members on a regular basis, say in order to control access to sensitive information. Instead of wasting time manually exporting each sheet one by one, we're gonna use VBA to automate the entire process. We'll export each sheet to its own file in just seconds. To do that, I'm gonna click on the developer tab and I've set up some special functions here. So these buttons, when I click on them, will run VBA code that I prepared earlier. In this case, we want to export worksheets. So I'm gonna click here and let Excel do its stuff. Now it's finished and it says, all worksheets have been exported successfully. We'll click OK. And then we'll go into Windows Explorer to check. And there are indeed 30 sheets and if we investigate the first one, we can open that. We'll see sheet one with all the data on it. And it's the same for each of these 30 sheets. Now that you've seen it run, it's vital to know how the VBA code works. Otherwise, it's just a mysterious black box that you can't customize. Let me first talk you through how to export a single worksheet because we need to learn how to walk before we can run. We'll start with a blank workbook. Go to File and click on Save As. We'll save this as a macro-enabled workbook with the .xlsm extension. This lets the file safely hold our VBA code. So if you save it just as a normal xlsx file, it won't keep the VBA. Let's call it Worksheet Exporter and click on Save. Head into the VBA editor by clicking on Developer and then on the Visual Basic button. We'll create a new code module to store our VBA code. What you need to do is right click on sheet one or any of these objects and then click on insert and module. So now it's called module one. We wanna change that to something more descriptive. Let's call it export one sheet and hit enter. Now we can't use spaces in the module names so I've used underscores instead. We'll start by writing sub for sub procedure which acts as a home for our code. We'll give this sub procedure a name and hit enter. So I call it export underscore one underscore worksheet underscore two underscore XLSX. Note, I can't use spaces in sub procedure names either. And everything here between the sub and n sub is where our code goes. Next, we need to declare variables. In VBA, these variables act as labeled storage boxes where you can put information to use later. So WB is one box, WS is another box, 
save to directory is a third box and f name is a fourth box. And you may have noticed this option explicit at the top. This command basically makes sure I've labeled all my storage boxes properly before I start using them. So this helps me to stop making spelling mistakes and it makes the code more reliable. Next, we're going to set wb to be equal to the active workbook. The active workbook is the Excel workbook that you're currently focused on. Now we'll get the path of the active workbook. We'll set save to directory to be equal to wb.path and we'll add an ampersand with double quote backslash double quote to give the directory. Now we want to make sure that the workbook has been saved before we run the macro on it. So if the save to directory just comes through as this backslash, we want to exit the sub. We we'll use an if and if statement. And now we want to export the first worksheet. We're going to set WS worksheet. So we'll set that to be the first worksheet in the active workbook. Now we copy it and then we'll define a file name for it. F name equals. So we have the save to directory and the worksheet name and dot xlsx. This next bit will just save it as a new file. And we'll close a new file. And we're almost there. We just need to let the user know that the first worksheet has been exported successfully. So we'll send a message box with information on it. Here's a workbook with some personnel data. It has several sheets. So finance, HR, IT, logistics, marketing, sales. But we're going to focus on the data tab and we're going to export everything on this to a new work file. We'll head to developer and click on Visual Basic. Then I'll just place this cursor in here. I'll click inside the sub procedure and then click on run. And it tells us the first worksheet has been exported successfully. So remember the first worksheet is the one with the data in it. We'll click OK. And now we'll check inside Windows Explorer. There is in fact a new file called data.xlsx and we're going to open it. What we'll find is that there is one worksheet called data and it has the data from our personnel list. So our VBA successfully exports the first worksheet. But before we go on to exporting every worksheet, we need to add a few extra features to make this code more robust. At the moment, it's a bit like a car without air conditioning, airbags or seat belts. It'll work, but we can make it safer and more comfortable to use. Imagine you're working on your computer and keep getting interrupted by constant pop-up notifications that wreck your focus. We can use application.screenupdating equals false to silence all those pop-ups, allowing us to focus on the task at hand without being distracted until we're done working. And we can use application.displayalerts is false to tell the computer to handle any application warnings or prompts by ignoring them so the VBA can keep on working uninterrupted. We'll just remember to turn them back on before we display the message box. To do that, we set the values equal to true. Now let's add some error handling. This line basically starts the error handling. So on an error, we'll go to the label called error handler and we'll define it down here. So this is the new label, error handler. First thing we want to do is make sure that the application.screenupdating is true and the application.displayalerts is true. So we'll just copy and paste that in here. Just to reset these to the default values. And then we'll send a message to the user to notify of the error. And now anytime there's an error, the program will jump straight to error handler down here. It will turn screen updating and display alerts to true. And it will send this message box to notify the user of the error. 
So it works for one worksheet, but how do we get it to export all worksheets? In Excel, there is something called the collection of worksheets in the active workbook. We're going to use the VBA for each WS, which stands for worksheet, in activeworkbook.worksheets, which is the collection of worksheets, to go through each worksheet in the collection and export it to individual files. Let's edit our VBA code so we don't export the first worksheet, but we export all the worksheets. To do this, we're going to change this line. Instead of setting WS to be wb.worksheets1, we're going to loop through each worksheet. And for each WS, we're going to do this same thing as before. And then we're going to loop back and continue with the next WS. And so it's very similar to what we did before for the first worksheet. But instead of just operating on the first worksheet, we're going to loop through each WS in the active workbook.worksheets collection, and then do the same as before, and then move on to the next WS until they're all done. It's time to run the code on our personnel data. Down here, you can see there are seven sheets, data, finance, human resources, IT, logistics, marketing, and sales. So we'd expect to see seven new files. Let's go run the macro. Click on developer, then Visual Basic. You'll notice that I've added a new module called export underscore all underscore sheets, and I've changed the name of the subroutine. So instead of just exporting one sheet, it now says export all worksheets. There's also one more thing I did, which I forgot to do before, which is just after we send the message box with the information, I've got to change the message. Instead of saying one worksheet, the first worksheet has been exported successfully. We're now going to say all worksheets have been exported successfully. And we're going to add this line, exit sub, so that when it gets to this point in the program, it's going to jump over the error handler and go straight to the end. Right, now let's run it using this green play button. And it sends our message, all worksheets have been exported successfully. Click OK. Checking in Windows File Explorer, we have data, finance, human resources, IT, logistics, marketing, and sales. And if I click on, say, HR, you see it's exported just the HR worksheet. That's great, but we still have one problem. As soon as I close this worksheet underscore exporter dot XLSM workbook, the VBA code will disappear from Excel's memory. So let me show you what happens. I'll click inside here, which is the worksheet exporter workbook. I'll close this, then go back to developer and Visual Basic. And you'll see we no longer have the VBA code because the workbook with the VBA code has been closed. So what we need is a way to make the code stay in memory so that we can run it anytime we have Excel open. The solution is to use the personal macro workbook. It's like having a dedicated assistant who's always on call. It's ready to carry out any tasks on any workbook. And it's always open in the background so you can assign its VBA code to the Excel ribbon with a custom menu. Here's how to get your own personal macro workbook. We start with a new Excel workbook, just a blank one will do. Then we click on this button here, which is to record a macro. Now it will come up with a dialog box which says record macro, macro name, just leave it at macro one. And then you can choose where to store the macro. So instead of new workbook or this workbook, we don't choose those. We choose personal macro workbook. And we click OK. If you didn't have a personal macro workbook before, it will now create one for you. So the final step is to click on this button, which is to stop recording the macro and head into developer and Visual Basic. And now you should have your very own personal macro workbook. You can expand the modules and here module one, this shows the empty macro that we just recorded. We can delete this. Then we have an empty module to work with. Let's rename module one I've chosen the name sheets underscore exporter. Remember, we can't use spaces, so I've gone with an underscore. Then we'll copy and paste the VBA code into our new module. I've included a link in the description for you to download the workbook with the final version of this code, which has a few improvements from what we covered in the video, such as this comment block with a module overview. So it's worth downloading the workbook with the latest version from launchexcel.com. Link is in the description. Now we return to Excel, head to the ribbon, right click, click on customize the ribbon, then choose commands from macros. 
On the right, we want to click on New Tab and click on that new tab that's just been created. Click on Rename and then we'll choose a name. Let's call it Custom Menu, then click OK. And on the New Group, we'll click on Rename. Let's call it Sheets and click OK. Now on the left, we have to find the macro from the Personal Workbook that says Export All Worksheets. We're going to click on Add and you see it's been added to this group. Let's click on that and rename it. I'm going to call it Export Worksheets and we'll give it a new icon and click OK. We should get a new custom menu with Export Worksheets. All you have to do is click on that button to run the macro. You've seen how exporting worksheets is so fast and easy with VBA, but don't stop there. If you want to take full control of your Excel workbooks, you'll need to know exactly how to lock and unlock all your sheets quickly. So watch this video next to learn how to do this, even when you don't know the passwords.